Are ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! Wow, it's so good to be here, you guys. I've been trying to start this video for like 30 minutes now because I don't know what to say and I don't know how to start. Okay, before we even get into anything, I just want to say a huge sorry that this video is being uploaded on a Tuesday and not a Saturday, and that is because of one simple fact that I ordered this neon sign like a month ago and it just came in today and I refused to do another video in front of a green screen this week, so like I wanted a good background. And yeah, we officially have a new studio and this is where like the content's gonna be made. I haven't had a solid background for like a few months, so we're back to it and I feel more put together. <laughs> I'm not put together at all. So, speaking of me not being put together, let's talk about me going to jail. <laughs> what? Yay! <laughs> Okay, well, let me give you what you guys all came here for. So, as you can tell by the title and what you clicked on the video for, yes, it is true. <laughs> this is gonna be like a really fun video to make for me because I just, it's ridiculous. It's so funny to me. Like, life is, life is, life is insane and 2020 is definitely the year that this would happen. Okay, so this video is getting uploaded on September 15th and the events that we're going to be discussing took place on June 13th. So that was three months ago. So as some of you guys know, we are currently in one of the biggest like racial injustice movements since like the civil rights movement in the 60s. And it's all just, it's everything, 2020 is just like such a fantastic year, isn't it? Because we're dealing with this and then we got a pandemic going on and there's just a lot going on. But I know for sure back in June, this was something that, it was at a very high peak, okay? Because this was just a few weeks after George Floyd was murdered. It was like when Breonna Taylor was being brought up and Elijah McClain and there was a lot of police brutality, there was a lot of protest, there was a lot of everything. So with that background being given, I'm sure you can assume what happened to me. So in the weeks leading up to June 13th, my car actually was dead. The battery in it was dead and I didn't have a way of like really getting anywhere and I was working from home so that was fine. I wasn't like really in a rush to get it fixed. And then I saw that Vegas started having protests and I felt really bad for not being able to go to them since I had been like preaching throughout all of my videos, you know, like how much Black Lives Matter and how much you should be participating and filling out like petitions and donating and like all this stuff but like I myself wasn't doing the most that I could which was actually like, going to like the protest. There was people protesting wearing masks like a few weeks before this so like if they're out there doing that dumb shit then I can actually be out there for something that matters. I got a new battery for my car like that Friday and then the next day on Saturday there was an organized protest down on the Las Vegas Strip. So I was like okay I'm gonna go to that, I'm going to make a sign, I'm gonna buy waters to give to people. So it was really important that I went to this because you know like again practice what you preach like I'm really about it like I genuinely care for everyone I think everyone should have the same equalities the same freedoms everything like that so I went to the protest and I went by myself Alexandria wasn't living here at the time and I had no friends and so I was like I'm just gonna go by myself and that's fine I'll just like bring a sign and just march with them and I had a huge poster that I made in my car and it said all lives don't matter until black lives matter and I took one picture of this on my snapchat and snapchat goes away after 24 hours and I did not save anything because I was in jail. <laughs> I made it in the car like real quick before I went so it wasn't like anything that was like fancy or anything. So there was a huge crowd in front of the Bellagio fountains and they had like open mic and like there was just people like expressing like how they felt about like police brutality and everything like that and I like felt, I felt like so much I felt very strong being there. I don't know how else to describe it. I just felt like it was right, you know? I even uploaded a picture to Instagram, like, I think the next day. And I, I said on it, even though I went to jail, like, at least I know I was on the right side of history last night. And that's really what it felt like. And I have chills saying that, but it's just like, I, I know what's going on this year is very important and very necessary. And I'm, I'm really just like, I feel very... It was a very moving experience, okay? It's like something in the history books, you know? After about like an hour of standing there and just like listening to everyone, then they said that we were gonna like march down the strip and I was like, okay, let's do that. And so then we like marched down the sidewalk of the strip for maybe like five minutes and then there was a really huge crowd of us and so we took onto the street and that feeling 
it was that was that was an that was an amazing feeling because it really felt like our message was getting heard like we were stopping traffic we got to an intersection and there was four-way traffic and it was like during rush hour and there was lines of cars backed up i know that we were heard that day and it was it, it was like a really good feeling that's probably the last good thing to happen that day so we marched for a very long time i'll put a map of the las vegas trip on where we started we started here and we ended up right before the welcome to las vegas sign so once we got to that area the police set up and like an entire like barricade of themselves blocking us from getting to the sign i guess they thought that we were gonna like destroy it or something at this point i was kind of like all right uh i guess we gotta like turn around here and just you know like i guess that's it like you know the police won't let us go any further so i guess like that was fulfilling and now it's time to go home right <laughs> we turned right down this street and then we're gonna make another right to like head back and so when we made a right down the street that we were gonna go down there was another block of police there and so we were like oh okay we can't go that way i guess we got to go back the way that we came so we turned back and then the police moved there and blocked us in so we were trapped with police on this side and police on this side and as this line was coming to come block us a, like a huge like military almost like a tank type truck drove past us with one of those like long machine guns like stuck out at us we didn't have like any weapons we weren't like setting fires to anything we didn't like destroy anything we didn't hurt anyone's car the only thing that we were doing was blocking traffic which yes we shouldn't have done but i don't think that it was necessary to bring an entire military truck with its like entire machine gun pointed at us which is again the whole reason why we were there because the police are insane and love overusing their power to murder people when we were blocked off from both sides our only option was to go straight down this like kind of really deserted road where like there was like construction and stuff and so we went down that way and then of course there was another police barricade of them there and then they started shooting um tear gas at us and so everyone started running back and our only two options were to go back to where the other two police were blocked so then they ordered us to disperse and we were like, well, where the f do you want us to go? Because you blocked off every direction that we can go. This was happening at a lot of other protests too. It wasn't just ours. I was hearing stories of this happening to other people too in other cities where police would trap you in every direction and then tell you to leave but not give you a way out. We were eventually cornered and there was like literally nowhere to go. I was standing on the sidewalk, cops just started charging at people and like I saw them running and I was like, oh, are they about to like get someone doing something illegal or something and then they ran straight towards me and i was like okay well they're gonna like run past me like i'm standing on the sidewalk y'all said to disperse i'm just like where do i go so i was like as they were coming to me i was like hey where do we go like if you guys want us to disperse and then the next thing i knew i was being dragged off the sidewalk by two police officers and they were getting ready to handcuff me and i was like Am I being arrested right now? And they didn't answer me. I started to put my hands behind my back and I was like, why am I being arrested? And they didn't answer that. And I said, why am I being arrested? They didn't answer that. And so I said, do you guys not have a reason? Is that why you're not answering me? And they didn't say anything. And then I said, I think my rights to know why I'm being arrested, right? And then one of the officers answered and said, because you failed to disperse. And I said, where did you want us to go if you blocked us in? Didn't get an answer for that. They emptied my pockets. I got all my then they sat me down on a sidewalk with like six other people and I was just talking with them and I was like, why did we get arrested? <laughs> we sat there for like 45 minutes and then the big like truck that they put like people that are going to jail in when they when they can't fit in a cop car because there's too many people being arrested at once. One of those vans. And then I was the first one put on it and then six other guys were put on after it. And it was really funny. It was a funny experience. They put me on there and then I was alone for five minutes and then they put another guy on there and we were alone together for five minutes and then they put another guy on there and then we were all three alone for five minutes and that kept happening over and over again. So I got to know each person as they got on and it was ridiculous. The guy that was sitting next to me was a construction worker near the strip and he had just gotten off of work and he saw the protest and he was like, okay, I'll walk with them. He got arrested for no reason as well. The guy next to him was telling people to get onto the sidewalk. He was like trying to help them and they arrested him while doing that. And two of the other guys on there were tourists that were leaving their hotel to go to a restaurant and they were arrested while walking to the restaurant because they were like mixed with this crowd. They were arresting people for literally no reason whatsoever so at this point i was like i was really calm because i was like they 
legit have no reason for arresting any of us so we're not in trouble like i know we're not i was like okay we're just gonna go through this dumbass process and then we'll be out and this is so stupid we get to jail you know the process of that change your shoes they give you those ugly orange croc slip-ons they put us in plastic handcuffs when we were like arrested at the protest but when we got to the jail we were put into the metal handcuffs which like gave me so many bruises because they were so uncomfortable and then the exciting part, we sat and waited in jail from 7 p.m. until 4 a.m. doing absolutely nothing. We just sat there and we just waited for our name to be called and then they called us up to a counter after waiting for two hours of doing nothing. And I hadn't eaten before I went because I thought I was going to like be able to eat dinner that night. No, I didn't. I didn't eat. I had like breakfast and that's it. So I was hungry as shit and I was also very, very, very cold. It was freezing in there. After literally I waited for two hours, like I'm just shortening the story, but literally imagine two hours of doing absolutely nothing passing by. Okay. After two hours, they finally called my name. I went up to the counter and they were like, they explained like my citation and they were like so if you sign this it just shows that you accept that you're gonna go to court on your scheduled date um, you're not in trouble blah 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 but um, th just sign this paper saying that you're gonna show up at court and I was like okay and then he like told me why I was arrested and these are the words that blew my mind the reason why I got arrested on my official citation is failure to stand on the sidewalk let me say that again the reason why I got arrested on my official citation reads Failure to stand on the sidewalk. Bitch. I was arrested while standing on a sidewalk. I was pulled off of a sidewalk to get arrested. So, wrong. Like when I saw that I was extra f***ing calm. I was like, oh, I was arrested while standing on a sidewalk. You can't arrest me for not standing on a sidewalk because I was on the sidewalk. Then I sat down and waited another two hours. So I got called and I was like, yes. I get to go home. So I went to the back and um, they fingerprinted me and I think they took my mugshot but I never got a picture so I don't know if they took it or not and like there was no camera so he, they were just like look here and I don't know if that was a picture or not. I wanted to smile but I didn't know if it was a picture and they were like okay now go over there and you should be free to go in a few minutes and I was like okay cool. So they put us in like another waiting area and we waited there for like two hours and so then they were calling names again. We thought that like behind the the wall was gonna be like the door to leave. They called our names and then they put they put us six into a jail cell and I was like they're about to make us like stay the night here like they put us in like a cell like literally like with the toilet we had already been there for like seven hours like we were going on our eighth hour and we were like we're not gonna leave tonight it was cool because everyone there was like super cool like every once in a while there would be like a random like actual like criminal arrested but other than that it was all just protesters like it was really it was it was a dumb experience but like i'm glad that it, i was like with cool people so we just were talking and then finally this guy came and was like okay you guys can come get your shoes put on our shoes they had all like all of our belongings in a bag and so we grabbed that all and then we were finally free to leave that was my entire experience in jail and it was really stupid one it was for no reason two i was hungry three i was cold Ugh. Four, it was it was for no reason. Like, if I can emphasize that enough, like, that's where your taxpayer money is going to arrest innocent protesters for standing on a sidewalk as they were standing on a sidewalk and then keeping them in jail. And when we were talking in the jail cell, we came to the conclusion that the only reason why they were keeping us there was to scare us and prevent us from going to further protests. They had no reason to keep us there. That's why they let us go eventually. And then I'll give you guys a bonus story. My first priority when I got out of jail was I was hungry and the jail was right next to Fremont Street. Like, I'm talking like it was like a five minute walk so I walked under Fremont and I got myself a bomb ass chili cheese dog that smack that was my first thing eating all day it was probably all it was about to be 5 a.m. so then I walked away from Fremont Street and I was like okay I'm gonna get an uber like somewhere in this area so I was really trying to use my phone a few weeks prior to this I had went skateboarding and I tripped on a like a, a rock or something and I had my phone in my hand I fell on my phone and so it like scraped all the way along the pavement and my screen was up like that it was so cracked so broken anytime I clicked on anything it would like jump through like seven apps and like call eight people like my phone was so broken and it was really hard like it took me an hour to request an uber and then I stared at the screen for like probably 15 minutes and a ride never came because of the time of day it was there was just like no one driving at that time and so I switched to Lyft and that took another like 40 minutes to download that and like actually use my phone on it and no one came for that either and so then it got to be like six in the morning and I was really tired and I had work later that day 
I was like just really trying to get home and my car was parked at the parking garage on the strip so I really needed an uber to get to my car to go home uber just wasn't working and my phone was like on 5% and it was like glitching and so I was like okay cool I have no idea how I'm gonna get to my car uh, finally I realized that there's still public buses here. I don't know why I forgot about like riding a public bus. I used to do that shit all the time in high school and in college, so like I was like, oh, just go ride the public bus. So I just bought a pass and then I rode the bus down to the trip. I'm mad that I didn't just do that from the beginning because I was waiting for an Uber and Lyft for like three hours outside. I finally got back to my car at like maybe 8 a.m. and then I drove home and then I finally went to sleep at like 9 a.m. and then I worked at 12 the next day. So yeah, defund the police and that's all goodbye. <laughs> There's actually a little bit more to the story. So then they scheduled our court date to be July 27th. I didn't really know where to go and there was like a help desk and so a lot of people were going there and telling them her name and she would like tell them where to go and I told her my name and she was like oh you're not on here and I was like what do you mean and I showed her my citation and she was like yeah and you're not on the list and I was like okay and so then I saw a few other people that I recognized from the protest and I was like hey did you guys ask her and she was like yeah and they said we weren't on the list and I was like well, we all have the same court date at 7 a.m., so what's going on? One of the girls that was at the protest, thankfully, her, her cousin is a lawyer, and so she met up with us, and she looked at all of our citations, and she was like, okay, I'm gonna get this handled for you guys. So um, we went upstairs with her to the courtroom so she could go talk to the judge, and after being at court for like maybe two hours, she finally came back to us and was like, yeah, they didn't have you guys scheduled for anything, but give me your information and I'll work on getting all of these dismissed. And it's been almost two months since that and I haven't heard back from her at all. And I still have contact with one of the people that I was there with and I asked them if they've heard from her and she said no. Um, so I'm assuming that she got it dismissed because they didn't even bother to like actually set an actual court date for us because they knew that they arrested us for no reason. We went to the protest and they arrested us and they wasted our time in jail. They set a court date for us, we went to court and they wasted our time at court. And they did all of this just so that we would not want to go through this process again of going to a protest and getting arrested and going to court. And I will do it all again. Like, I literally don't care. Like, waste my time. Like, all I have is time, bitch. Like, until they defund the police, until Breonna Taylor, until Elijah McClain, until George Floyd, everyone gets the justice that they need and people can live freely in this country without the systematic racism that we have built, without police brutality that we have, without, like, literally all of this, if everyone could just, like, accept that people are equal and we could just like we could all move on and not have to waste anyone's time so yeah with that being said black lives matter black lives still matter black lives will always matter and the only reason why i haven't continued saying that in my videos is just because i know my audience by this point i preached this to you guys for a very long time i know that if you're watching my videos you're not racist okay if you are please click off please unsubscribe i don't want that here you can leave goodbye i know that everyone watching you guys are nice genuine kind-hearted people so thank you for being here and supporting me please send the petitions down in the description below there's plenty of resources down there please educate yourself the entire description box down below is dedicated completely to black lives matter stuff so please just like look at it i know i dropped that picture on instagram saying that i went to jail and like never really elaborated on it again so i hope this gave like some of you guys closure that had been wondering what happened and then if you didn't know well now you know. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. Also, make sure to hit that big red subscribe button because I make new videos every Saturday, which means that you get a new video every single Saturday. Also, hit that post notification bell. That way you get a notification every time that I upload a video. Also, share this video to anyone who's been to jail, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. When I got out of jail, I was not able to, like, real... I wasn't like really 